The central theme of Book 1 of Machiavelli's Discourses on Livy is how the best form of political governance, or how the Roman Republic became a more perfect republic, is through conflict. Machiavelli does not believe in the from heaven concept of constitutions. No constitution is initially perfect. Nor does he agree with the classical political philosophers, Plato, Aristotle, Cicero, etc., that the best political regime can be rationally constructed by a study of nature replicated into a constitution. The world is a messy and imperfect place. But it is precisely this messiness and this imperfectness that drives progress forward and leads to the creation of Republican government. Given the reality of no polity ever having achieved that utopian constitution, constitutional formations are imperfect and can trend in two directions, worse or better. In other words, more tyranny or more liberty, or as Machiavelli preferred, more tyrannical or more perfect republic. Machiavelli's general thought is very much compatible with Abraham Lincoln and the idea of constructing, quote, a more perfect union. As Machiavelli states, it is necessary for anyone who organizes a republic and establishes laws in it to take for granted that all men are evil and that they will always act according to the wickedness of their nature whenever they have the opportunity. Machiavelli's bleak vision is reflective of his mixed Catholic heritage. On the one hand, Machiavelli is very Catholic. His vision of man is akin to Augustine's fallen sinner. Man is tainted, if you will, by original sin and the lust for domination and self-interest and power. The task of law and government is to curb the wickedness of man and move him in the direction of the common good. But Machiavelli was a heterodox Catholic at best, a closet atheist at worst. Machiavelli had no love for the institutional church, that is for sure. In fact, he saw the Roman court, the papal states, as a barrier to possible Italian unification under a republican form of government. Therefore, Machiavelli is also a sort of forerunner to Italian nationalism. Nevertheless, it is Machiavelli's understanding of man as a conflictual animal that undergirds his political theory of dialectical advancement and how conflict produces greater liberty. Since polities do not start out with the ideal constitutions, even if some are more free than others, all polities suffer from internal strife that either destroys the polity or strengthens it. As it relates to Rome, the subject of his analysis, internal conflict strengthened the Republic. Again, Machiavelli, reflecting on what we now call the conflict of the orders between the patricians and the plebeians, writes, in this way, after many disorders, disturbances, and the danger of disagreement, that arose between the plebeians and nobility. The creation of the tribunes came about for the security of the plebeians, and these tribunes were established with such power and prestige that they could always thereafter act as intermediaries between the plebeians and the senate and could curb the insolence and the power of the nobles. The conflict of the orders brought about greater republicanism, greater liberty, because although a de jure republic, Rome was a de facto tyranny or oligarchy. Only the interests of the rich landowning patrician elite were represented after the expulsion of Tarquin and his sons. The conflict of the orders, which created the plebeian tribunates, was instrumental in achieving several things. First was the greater representation of the interests of all Roman society, thus making the Republic more perfect 
and more Republican and less tyrannical because Republicanism is about having all interests in society represented, even if unequally. Second is that the representation of the plebeians gave them a buy-in, so to speak, to perform duties and defend the Republic, which they now had a stake in. And again, only when all segments of society have a stake in society can society be called a Republic. And when all parties, all individuals, all groups in a society are willing to defend it, it will become stronger as a result. This is the greater value of Republican government over all other forms of government, i.e. tyranny in whatever constitutional guise it manifests itself in. The common populace feel that they have a stake in its success and survival and will, therefore, be willing to make sacrifices for its preservation. Look at it this way. If in a tyranny the peasants have zero representation in government, they will not defend the nation when the going gets tough. People yearn for liberty and justice. Another Augustinian inheritance in Machiavelli, albeit secularized in his thought, and will therefore seek liberty and justice in whomever they think will best dispense it to them. In a republic, however, since the peasants have a represented stake in the nation, they will more enthusiastically fight for its defense and survival in times of trouble because they have a motivating reason to do so. And in doing so, society is strong and virtuous. Third is that the compromises reached in political conflict leads to greater liberty and stability in society. Greater liberty is to the advantage of the disenfranchised. Greater stability is an advantage to those already in power. Both sides win. Liberty and stability, as Machiavelli sees it, are two sides of the same coin. They share a sort of symbiotic relationship. A nation with excessive liberty and no stability will collapse into anarchy, where liberty is subsequently deprived because the strongest impose their order on everyone else. A nation with excessive stability, i.e. authoritarianism or tyranny, will slip into civil war where stability is then subsequently deprived and we all suffer the pains of chaos. Thus, the relationship between liberty and stability is a tenuous one, but one that binds together through political conflict leading to compromise, like the establishment of the plebeian tribunates. Since conflict is the product of greater political representation and therefore liberty and stability, political conflict rather than unity is to be celebrated. As Machiavelli writes, if these disturbances were the cause of the creation of the tribunes, they deserve the highest praise because besides giving to the people its role in democratic administration, the tribunes were established as the guardians of Roman liberty. Rome's Republic was great because it developed over the course of centuries of conflict, beginning with the overthrow of the monarchy, where the aristocrats reasserted their ancient privileges and rights, and the conflict of the orders between the patrician aristocrats and the plebeian underclass, which established privileges and rights to the plebeians and gave them a stake in the continuation, survival, and empowerment of the Roman Republic. It is because the plebeians achieved privileges and rights through conflict that made them more attached to the body politic than before. Machiavelli could write, the Roman plebeians generally thought that they deserved the consulate because they compromised the largest part of the city. They ran greater risk in the wars and they kept Rome free and powerful with their own might and muscle. 
The development of the best form of government is, in Machiavelli, almost by force of historical accidents. Constitutions develop over the course of history, becoming better over time. There is no perfect originalism in Machiavelli's thought. The establishment of a constitution is important because it gives the people a sense of liberty and equality, but a constitution is made better through the conflicts of society, which bring greater liberty and greater equality, a more perfect union to come into existence. It is not the rejection of ancestral lineage that creates the best constitution, but the development of that ancestral lineage that manifests itself in fruition over the course of history. The Romans, Machiavelli tells us, had an instinct for liberty, however imperfect their founding was. Machiavelli also says the Romans were right in honoring their history, their founding and founders, precisely because it was the spirit of struggle and liberty that continued to be developed, leading to the overthrow of Tarquin and the eventual inclusion of the plebeians into the constitutional order. The conflict that was celebrated at the origin of the Roman Republic is something good. None of this would have been possible without conflict, and it would have equally been unlikely that this greater development of liberty and equality in the Roman Republic would have occurred if not for the fact that the Romans already had the seed of conflict and their taste for liberty in their genus, their origin, their origin story of the conflict of Aeneas's struggle, the overthrow of the monarchy, is something that the plebeians latched on to in their conflict with the patricians. They argued that they were more Roman than the Roman aristocracy. The formation of the Roman Republic, the Twelve Tablets of the Roman Law, and its propagation throughout the rest of Europe came about through historical conflict. Conflicts between Rome and its tyrant kings, conflicts between the patricians and the plebeians, compromise and new creations all worked to produce that great messiness that was the Roman Republic and her laws. The Republic that was so venerable and great did not descend from heaven at the snap of Juno's fingers, nor was the Roman constitution crafted by Romulus or Aeneas. Instead, the Republic and her laws were the product of dialectical conflict in history, which produced the most remarkable form of government ever to grace the earth with its just laws embodying liberty and order as the byproduct of these conflicts. From Machiavelli's eyes, we can see that the greatest political advancements always emerge from conflict. And in the discourses of Livy, Machiavelli's reflections on Roman history underscore this reality. And it was Machiavelli's hope that the conflict occurring in early modernity, in the late Renaissance, that was boiling over all of Italy could have given the Italians the moment to create a unified republic reminiscent of the Roman Republic of old. While that reality did not come into existence, Machiavelli's reflections on how the greatest form of political government, the greatest liberty and equality, stability and order is in fact the result of social and external conflicts are worth considering in the 21st century.